Well, hey there, hi there, ho there, my happy innovators. How have you all been doing? What are you guys up to? I mean, it's been like forever since I had a chance to talk to you. And I apologize for that once again. Um, I won't make excuses, but I will say that, you know, I'm sure you're all aware at this point that I just recently lost my father. You know, he died back in November. And um, yeah, we're a few months out from that now. But, um, you know, I've still been very much in that grieving like headspace and um, you know it's not quite as bad as it was back in November but uh, you know it's still very much there and uh, I haven't really had believe it or not the desire to talk to too many people about too many things I mean I just am relatively still and quiet and if you know me (laughs) that's really out of character but you know I just kind of hearken it to this idea that I'm probably like grieving the loss of my father and um, I guess that kind of thing is you know pretty deep and uh, not the kind of thing that manifests itself in obvious ways all the time so I just have kind of resigned myself to that idea that I'm just in that state. And, you know, maybe some of you out there that are listening to this podcast right now uh, can relate to that. You know, maybe you've lost a parent in the past and you've dealt with it. Maybe you were young or maybe it was not too long ago. Maybe it was, you know, uh, when you were older, later in life that you lost your parents. But For me, it happened now, you know, and I'm in it and I can't avoid it. There's no getting around it. You know, you really just have to kind of confront these emotions. And um, I just have found myself very quiet, thinking a lot, um, not really crying and that kind of stuff, but just kind of um, getting these flashbacks, you know, of the way things used to be when he was around and you know really it's a testimony to uh, how important people are to us in our lives you know when someone dies when someone goes away like that you really kind of grasp or at least understand in a very succinct way how much of a loss it actually is. You can't prepare yourself for it, you know? You can try to, you can think that you're prepared or that you're ready for that kind of uh, loss and that kind of sadness, but it's not true. You know, you can't be prepared. It doesn't work that way, you know? And um, I imagine it's really got a lot to do with why I haven't put a podcast out. I mean, I just haven't felt like talking. I don't, I don't want to talk to anybody about anything. I just want to sit still. And, uh, I've been working on a lot of music. Uh, you know, I got the PC three Mira one album completed and I'm in the process right now of, you know, getting that out there officially on all my platforms and, Got a couple more surprises in that department coming down the pike. Um, I've been working on all that stuff a lot. You know, it kind of helps to pass the time. And, uh, you know, I I can be quiet. I could be not talking. I could be sitting still, but like working on music. (laughs) It's like uh, a way of still getting something done. You know, but I got to tell you to sit down and do this podcast today for me, at least right now, uh, it was like, you know, a monumental feat, you know, just to put the microphone up and try to come up with something to talk about. But I will say this, that, you know, I was thinking yesterday and today, today is actually Thursday. Um, I was thinking about doing a podcast and. Uh, 
you know, I was going to get around to it. I got a couple other things going on, but I saw that there was a comment from one of the happy innovators that goes by the name of Lennox. And uh, he asked me in a comment, like, hey, do you think you're going to be putting out a podcast soon? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it like right now. You know, I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to do it because he asked, you know. So thank you, Lennox, for the inspiration. You gave me the gumption to, like, you know, put the microphone up and do some talking. So what can we talk about today? You know, I, I don't know. I don't have a, an idea. I don't have a plan. So I'm going to ad lib it. You know, I'm just going to go for it. I guess I could talk about that uh, train derailment and chemical spill in East Palestine, Ohio. Um, really, it's not too far from where I grew up. And uh, I actually have a relative who owns a house there in that village of East Palestine. And uh, from what I understand, you know, they've lost everything. And um, it's real. You know, it's not just uh, propaganda or, you know, news media rumors. It's real. And um, but I do find it strange, okay, that as soon as there's this train derailment in East Palestine and it makes the news two weeks after it happened, um, you know, we finally get wind of anything happening at all. Uh, All of a sudden, there's all these train derailments and chemical spills popping up all over America and really kind of like all over the world. And I don't know what to think of it. I just don't, you know, um, You know, I was watching Joe Rogan the other day and uh, I I noticed something that was odd. You know, he was talking uh, with Jamie, you know, the computer guy on his podcast and his guest. And they were like trying to talk about events that were happening, but they kept having to confirm that that statement they just made is true. And... You know, while that may go over everybody's head, I stop and think about that for a minute. Like, think about this, that we live in a time where when you make a statement about something, you have to verify or confirm that what you're saying is true. Now, it used to be that way on mainstream media, okay? Uh, And they had people that were fact checkers and lawyers and people that made sure that the statements that they were making were true and that there weren't going to be any libel or slander lawsuits, right? And then we went into this phase with the internet, YouTube, and, you know, social media, especially over the past maybe four or five years, where you could make any statement you wanted and nobody had to confirm anything. So there's like this culture of hearsay and, you know, misinformation and lying and, um, you know, nobody being held accountable. But now it's kind of starting to swing the other way. You know, that pendulum is starting to swing the other way where people are in order to communicate effectively and efficiently are being put in a situation where They have to be able to verify what they're saying. And you know what? I'm not 100% sure that there's a way to even do that anymore. I mean, really, how do you know? How do we know if anything we're hearing or saying or whatever is actually true? I mean, it's strange to even think about, isn't it? Like everything we're hearing about everything you see has that potential to be completely fabricated and like not true at all. It doesn't matter what it is. Think about that. That's pretty screwed up, you know? And I don't know. I I guess I, I do kind of see, like I said, that pendulum, you know, swings both ways, you know? Um, I've talked about that before in podcasts, you know, we can't, be a culture of people that you know are too extreme one side or the other like you can't 
go too far. You can't rock the boat too much. Because when you do that, you have to remember that that pendulum is going to swing back the other way. It's just like the law of nature, you know? Actually, it makes me think about that movie, A Christmas Story. Do you remember that movie? You know, about Ralphie and the Red Rider BB gun and all that. Remember that? There was that bully. There were those two bullies, really, that were picking on the little kids. And, you know, the two bullies are on, you know, by themselves, isolated. There's nobody there. And the little guy hits the big guy in the shoulder, you know, punches him. Bam! Like in the shoulder. Like, like he tried to hurt him, you know? And the bigger guy just turns around and lets him have it twice as hard on his shoulder. You know, I think that's what we're in right now is like a, a never ending uh, game, you know, or a never ending process of that, you know, tit for tat. You hit me, I hit you back. Then you hit me back, then I hit you back. Then you hit me back and then I hit you back again. You know, it's so stupid, but we are there. And that's why you don't, you know, rock the boat too much. Like if you don't know the golden rule you know what does it do unto others as you'd have done to you I mean, let's stop for a moment right and break that down do to other people what you want them to do for you or do to you okay so if you don't want to be canceled stop canceling people <laughs> it's like if you don't want to be you know shunned or something or discredited or fired from your job, then stop doing that to other people, right? Like at some point, somebody's got to be the first person to not do it back. You know, that's the only way to end that stupid behavior. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe we're heading in that direction now. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know much, but what I do know right now is that I probably should take a sip of my coffee. So hang on. I'm sitting here <laughs> in my studio just trying to eat up the clock. You know, I don't, I don't have anything to talk about. I don't. I wish that you guys were here with me right now because then I would have no problem coming up with something. But I suppose I could do a podcast about how I can't think of anything to talk about. That would be a first, right? I mean, can you imagine Mike Bostwick not having anything to talk about? What the hell is going on? You know, I suppose I could talk to you about um, saying thank you, really, to some of my loyal listeners like Lennox. And there's a couple other people that I want to give a shout out to, like Gail and Barbara and Stu and Lily and uh, who else? I guess my brother Steve, if you're out there. Um, you know, thank you guys. Thank you for uh, for listening. And also to thank you, everybody, for the well wishes about the loss of my pops, you know, the loss of my dad. It was really, really nice to hear from you guys about that. And some of you are really, really thoughtful and uh you know this podcast that i'm doing you know the singularity podcast the way that i'm doing it it is so free form and so like you know a guy in a room with a microphone you know i don't have a team it's not official i make podcasts whenever i feel like making them and you guys are kind of like patient with that And um, it's real, you know, like I've said before, like, I don't want to have to make a podcast like every Tuesday or something stupid like that, because it would be bullshit. Like I would be, you know, (laughs) you know, struggling to come up with something. I I talk when I have something to talk about. Today is an exception, but um, it's just been so damn long. You know, I feel bad about that. I do. I have a conscience about this. You know, believe it or not. And um, I don't know. Maybe I should just stick to making music for the time being. But um, 
I don't know. I don't know. My world has kind of been turned upside down, you know? Um, I mean, it really has. I'm not trying to be dramatic or anything. I've, I mean, it's like... Uh, You know, I, I hear famous artists and stuff from history, and they talked about the loss of their parents being this major moment in their life. Like, you know, you can think of pretty much any artist in history, and their life was going one way until they lost, like, their mother, or until they lost their father, and then their career and their style changed, or they went off into some other thing. It kind of like took a left-hand turn. You know, it changed things. It changes things. And, you know, I never really imagined it going that way for me. Okay, but, man, it has. You know, it's really, really strange. I mean, I don't think I'll ever lose the desire to make music and, you know, even do this podcast, and, and like, entirely. It's not going to go away, but... Oh, folks, I am just like kind of wrestling with this, you know, um, I'm not like, you know, on the ground, rubbing gravel through my hair, sobbing the loss of my father. You know, it's not like that, but it's like um, it comes in these waves of memory, things that come back to me, you know, like I don't want to hear anything about the past, you know, right now. I don't want to watch like nostalgia anything like i don't want to think about the way that it used to be right now i i I don't want to feel that you know i don't want to think about that it brings back too much stuff um i don't know maybe it's like that's why i'm talking about it here you know um processing it you know um you know, I had plans to do uh, the description for my last two Pipe Choir albums before I did another podcast, like, just talking. But uh, I just, I, I, I guess I needed to process this stuff. You know, there is this truth to talking into the microphone like I am right now, and I've talked about it before, where at least for me anyway, for anybody who really wants to hear this or even cares. But it's like, when I talk about something on this podcast, when it comes out of my mouth and into the microphone and it goes out into the cosmos, you know, these words that I'm saying, these thoughts and these feelings and these emotions, when they come out, they disappear. I mean, it's like a form of exorcism. You know, you get the hurt feelings out. And just speaking them, just saying it, is like a form of, like, therapy or something, you know? And um, I guess ultimately all of this, like all these feelings and emotions and sadness and this whole experience is really just a testimony to how much I loved my dad. I mean, I really did. I suppose I could take a minute to talk to you a little bit about him, you know, because none of you guys ever had the chance to meet my dad, okay? But, you know, and I'm aware, too. I'm aware that everybody thinks the world of their dad. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I say, oh, my dad was, like, such a great guy, and you're like, yeah, mine was, too, you know? But... Well, you know, actually, I did a podcast a long time ago. I think it was a Snowflake 33 podcast where I talked about my dad and I told his story. And, uh, you know, so I won't do it all here right now, but you can go back and listen to that. And, you know, it was all true. You know, I mean, this guy, this man who was my father, my dad, was such a nice person to everybody. You, I mean, you just can't imagine it. He was so generous and kind. You know You know what? I'll tell you a story. Here's a story that I will tell you. My brother had a friend. His name was Rob. 
And Rob had a rough life, okay? He went through a lot of really, really difficult struggles. This guy, even as a little boy, his life was just chaos. And he was a friend of my brother's. And my brother brought him around to the house a lot. And my father, in his infinite wisdom, kind of figured out pretty quick, pretty early on, that this guy, Rob, you know, probably needed a dad. You know, he probably would have benefited from having, uh, you know, a, a masculine role model in his life kind of looking out for him. You know, watching out for him, including him uh, like on the holidays, you know, things like that. And for year after year after year, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, birthdays, my brother would show up and so would his friend Rob. And Rob became a part of my family. Okay, now my dad didn't officially adopt him. Okay, but... My father loved him and cared for him. And this is just one example of how my father was, okay? And when my father was dying, okay, when he was breathing his last breath, Rob was standing right next to my father, holding his hand, comforting him, you know, right there along with all of us brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and everybody that was crowded into my father's hospital room, you know. Um, He was sitting there with my father when my father breathed his last breath, Rob. And I'll never forget that as long as I live. And, you know, um, we had the privilege of... uh, taking my father's body out of the hospital down to the ambulance, you know, a uh, select few of us who were willing to do that and wanted to do that. And Rob was one of them, you know, and as long as I live, I will never forget that Rob was there and it made sense that he was there, you know, Maybe, like, in some ways, it's because he, like, owed that to my father, maybe, you know? But I don't really think it was that. I think it was, like, Rob really loved my dad. (laughs) Like, he really loved my dad. And my dad really loved him. It's kind of like my wife's relationship with my dad. You know, she loved my dad before she loved me. And my dad loved her before we were together. Like, we, my father loves her. He loved her when she was a kid. He took care of her. He helped. That is the kind of person that my father was. You know, so generous with his time and with his money, which, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of, but it was never a problem for somebody to get what they needed. And it would come from my dad, and it would be without fanfare, and not everybody really knew And, uh, you know, um, I was so fortunate. I, me, I was so fortunate to have a dad like that. You know, if you are listening to this podcast right now, you have children of your own, or maybe your dad is sick or something, you know, go to these people, go to the people in your life. And damn it, I'm not kidding around. I mean, you got to really listen to me here. Go to the people that you love and tell them that you love them. You, you've you got to say it. You've got to be like communicating with the people that you love on that level. There is nothing wrong with telling the people that you love and really genuinely care about that you love them. You know, it's it's so simple and easy to do. And... You know, when someone makes the point of telling you that they love you, man, acknowledge it, you know, hear it with your ears, like hear it. When someone says, I love you, I love you, hear them, you know, it's like, ah, ah, 
I am glad, okay, I, I am glad that I had the foresight and the intelligence, you know, to talk to my father like that. You know, I really am. I'm glad. I have no regrets on that level, you know. I did everything I needed to do for my dad. I said what I needed to say. He said it to me. We closed the book, you know, and that makes me sad to even say it, but it's true. And it, and it was good. It was good to do. I feel sorry for people who don't get that opportunity to close the book with the people that they love. But, you know, when they get to the end of the line, you know, but uh, I can't help this idea or thinking of this idea that, you know, the world was one way for like 50 years, man, you know, in my life, my life, I traveled, you know, I moved around, I did different things, but those constants like my dad, my mom, the house I grew up in, all that stuff, you know, when that stuff starts to slip away, whoo, man, it's really easy to lose your bearings. It is. And, you know, I'm not like whacked out. I'm not flipping out. I'm not unable to bear the grief, you know, but it hurts, man. It does. And it hurts in places I didn't really think it would. I didn't realize it would, you know, my, my heart and my mind. I don't know. Part of me is in a state of shock. You know, I'm shocked that all that actually happened. You know, that that guy that I love so much and we laughed so much. Like my dad and I, when we talked, oh, we had so much fun. We laughed at all kinds of stuff and just, you know, my father would always say that to me. He's, Michael, whenever I talk to you, I wind up laughing and laughing and laughing. You know, we just did. We had that kind of relationship. And it's so hard to imagine that that guy, that personality, and like that, that touchstone that I was always able to rely on or, or go to is gone. Gone, man. Gone not coming back not gonna be back it's not gonna happen anymore you know so now <laughs> it's like I'm you know kind of focusing on like the next best person that I know right which is my wife my wife is like a female version of my dad you know their personalities are very much the same um, they got along really well I think because of that so you know, my wife was always the number two. My dad was number one. My dad, I, I, you know, he had years on her. I've known him forever. And uh, she came much later. But I would say she's the second. She's number two. Now that my dad is not here anymore, my wife is, you know, promoted to the number one slot. You know, the nicest person that I know. And uh, the greatest person that I know. It's so true. And I'm, oh, I can hear you guys, you know, you're like, oh, that's so sweet, you know, but it's, it's true, man. It's true. Um, thank God I'm, you know, smart enough to like know that, you know, I'm smart enough to read people. I'm smart enough to see what they are, you know, in my life. And, uh, and that goes for all of you guys too, you know, there's, uh, all kinds of people that come at me, you know, because of pipe choir and stuff, people from all over the world that want to talk to me or whatever. And, uh, I don't mind. I like that. I do. It's one of the best things about doing this whole thing, but, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm, I, I'm just more appreciative of that now, you know? Uh, any kind words that you can send my way and, you know, kind sentiment that you can send my way is much appreciated. I don't know. That's all there is to say, really. I know that this isn't much of a podcast. It really isn't. And it's not uplifting and funny and happy because I'm not uplifting and happy right now. I'm really not. I'm trying 
to be, you know, I'm trying to get back to that sense of, you know, joy that I used to have. I mean, I still have it. Come on, I still have it, but uh, I don't know. It's much more difficult to uh, attain right now. You know, it's uh, a hurdle that I have to jump over, and I really don't have too much else to say about it. You know, I love my dad. I miss him, you know. Um, I don't feel like really talking too much. I don't feel like uh, saying anything or doing anything, really. I feel like just being still and thinking and um, what would be the what would be the idea I guess coming to some conclusions about things you know cl- you know uh, closing the book you know uh, getting past this you know getting some new music out um, doing what I'm supposed to be doing getting things done um I guess the fact that it's winter doesn't help. <laughs> it's like really cold outside and really bad weather. And, you know, the sun is not shining. And, uh, you know, it's just the the better things in life, the things that are really great and fun, they're just, they don't appeal to me right now. You know, um, I have flashes of it, you know, but man, I don't know. Maybe I've said too much. Maybe I'm, you know, wearing my heart on my sleeve. But, I mean, anything else at this point would be total bullshit from me, you know? And uh, I'm just not capable of that. I'm not, you know? I'm incapable of bullshit right now. And um, so I'm going to stop talking now and sign off. I wanted to give you a podcast. Here it is. You know, I really, really wanted to. I did. I knew that I should, and I did it. So, you know, bear with me. Hang on. Some stuff is coming. New stuff is coming. I am always working on new music, new pipe choir music, new PC3 music, uh, maybe a mic TV, uh, and some more podcasts and stuff. So, you know, it's coming, folks. It is. Um, I'm busy doing that. Just not talking a lot. Just not, you know, not wanting to engage with anybody really other than my wife and maybe like a friend or two, you know, family member or two. But um, this is the like the only time in my life that I can remember where I really didn't want to (laughs) talk. It's like a miracle. I can't believe it. I hope I come out of it soon. You know, here's hoping for that. But until the next podcast, my happy innovators, um, well, I'll apologize for this one because it's a downer. But, um, you know, if you want to keep what you've got, you've got to give it away. And uh, I guess that's all there is to say until next time. So peace out, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Here comes some new stuff. Don't worry. I have not or will not ever forget about you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your kind words. You will be hearing more from me soon. Peace and love to all of you and your families. Okay? And go to those people that you love, damn it, and tell them that you love them. Let them know. Make sure they know that you love them. You know? So, peace out, everybody. Talk soon.